This is our family album. See, you have your grandpa's blue eyes and my dimples. And you get your height from your father and your mother's fair complexion. I wonder why I get these features from different family members. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define heredity Define variation Describe the life and work of Mendel Describe the terms used in genetics Describe Mendel's experimental study with pea plants Describe the process of sex determination This boy resembles his mother in skin color and father in height. Let's see why. All the cells in his father and mother have 46 chromosomes each. During the reproductive process, his father produces a male gamete and his mother produces a female gamete each with 23 chromosomes. The male gamete fuses with the female gamete to give birth to a child. So, the newborn child receives 23 chromosomes from the father and the other 23 from the mother. Boy receives genes for the characters from both the parents. The boy has received the gene for height from his father and the gene for skin color from his mother. That's why the boy resembles his parents in skin, color and height. But the boy differs from parents in other ways such as his curly hair and blue eyes which neither of the parents have. Any characteristic that is transferred from parent to offspring, such as height and color, is known as a trait. As this trait is inherited from the parents, it is known as an inherited trait. This process of passing traits from parent to offspring is called heredity. Offspring are never an exact copy of their parents, as you have seen in this case. There may be some differences. Curly hair and blue eyes of the boy are the differences that are called variations. Gregor Johann Mendel was the pioneer among geneticists who discovered the concept of inheritance of characters or traits from parents to offspring. He proposed the principle of inheritance and is known as the father of genetics. He experimented with pea plants and found variations among them. Later, these variations were found to be genetic variations. Variations in heredity occur during sexual as well as asexual reproduction. Let's look at a few examples. When we observe a field of sugarcane, we hardly find variations among the individual plants. A bacterium divides into two bacteria and the resultant two bacteria redivide to generate four bacteria. All these bacteria are identical. However, there may be minor differences generated due to small inaccuracies in DNA copying. Now things change slightly in the case of sexual reproduction. Maximum variation is produced by this process as can be seen in the case of human beings. 
Did you know that Mendel was educated in a monastery and studied science and mathematics at the University of Vienna? He wanted to be a teacher, but he failed the teaching examination. However, he did not lose hope. He returned to the monastery and started growing pea plants in the garden. Mendel blended his knowledge of science and mathematics to keep count of the pea plants exhibiting a particular feature in each generation. Mendel researched heredity and arrived at the laws of inheritance. He used a number of pea plants with various traits such as round or wrinkled seeds, tall or short plants, white or violet flowers and so on. Let's look at some of the most important terms in heredity and variation. The word gene comes first. It is the DNA segment of the chromosome. Genes control the expression of characters. Genes were called factors by Mendel. Each gene is present in two alternative forms called allele. Each allele controls single traits. Tallness in a plant is a dominant trait, controlled by a dominant allele, and is represented by the uppercase T. Shortness in a plant is a recessive trait, controlled by a recessive allele, and is represented by the lowercase T. These alleles combine to make a genotype, such as uppercase TT or uppercase T and lowercase t or lowercase TT. Uppercase TT and lowercase TT are homozygous and uppercase T and lowercase T is referred to as heterozygous. Yet another important term is a phenotype. Phenotype is the physical appearance resulting from a genotype. For example, if a particular plant is tall, it is the tall phenotype. Poonet square helps to predict the possible genotypes and phenotypes of offsprings. Let's see how to make a Poonet square. Place the genetic combinations of the parents, like parent lowercase tt, along the right of a grid, and other parent uppercase tt, along the left of the grid, and the alleles of the gamete, uppercase t, and lowercase t, below the parents. Combine the parent alleles and place the offspring's possible genetic combinations in the below box. F1 generation is the first filial generation of spring produced by crossing two parental strains. F2 generation is the second filial generation of spring produced by crossing F1s. I don't think I've understood completely. Let's take another example to make things clear. The human population has two variants of earlobes. Some have free earlobes while others have attached earlobes. A particular mechanism is responsible for such variations. The inheritance of traits is related to the fact that both the father and the mother contribute equal amounts of genetic material to the child. If we try 
to correlate the earlobe of a child with that of his parents, we understand that the father's gene for earlobe is dominant, because of which the child developed an attached earlobe. Well, let me explain this through Mendel's experiment in which inheritance of only one character, for instance the height of the pea plant, is considered. Such inheritance pattern is referred to as monohybrid inheritance. The Pu net square shows a cross between parental tall uppercase TT and dwarf lowercase TT plants. The gametes produced by them are T and T and the F1 generation has all uppercase T and lowercase T progeny. In first generation or F1 progeny, all of the plants were tall. This means that only one of the parental traits were visible. The trait which is visible in F1 generation is called the dominant trait and one which remains suppressed is known as the recessive trait. Here, Tallness is the dominant trait and shortness is the recessive trait. Were all the tall plants in the F1 generation exactly as tall as the plants of the parent generation? Yes, they were all as tall as the parent generation. Next. Mendel allowed the F1 tall plant of the genotype uppercase T and lowercase T to reproduce by self-pollination. As a result of random fertilization, the resultant zygotes can be of the genotypes uppercase TT or uppercase T and lowercase T or lowercase TT. Interestingly enough, the second generation, or F2 progeny, were not all tall. Instead, one quarter of them were short. This indicates that both the tallness and shortness traits were inherited in the F2 plants. Now, let's see the entire experiment in the form of genotypic and phenotypic representation. From the Poonet square, it is seen that random fertilizations result in one-fourth uppercase TT, half uppercase T, and lowercase T, and one-fourth lowercase TT. This gave the genotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. One pure tall plant, two hybrid tall plants, and one dwarf plant. Thus, 75% of the progeny produced in F2 generation were tall and 25% were dwarf. This gave the phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 1. What happens when pea plants of two different characteristics are bred with each other? That's an interesting question. Let's consider a hypothetical situation. We cross a plant producing round and yellow seeds, uppercase RR and uppercase YY, with a plant producing wrinkled green seeds lowercase rr and lowercase yy. The inheritance of two such characters is known as dehybrid inheritance. The entire F1 progeny produces round and yellow seeds, uppercase r and lowercase r and uppercase y and lowercase y. In such a case, 
round and yellow seeds would be the dominant traits. What happens when these plants of the F1 progeny are self-pollinated? Mendel found that some plants of the F2 progeny were similar to their parents and produced round yellow seeds and some of them produced wrinkled green seeds. However, some plants of the F2 progeny even showed new combinations like round, green and wrinkled yellow seeds. Therefore, it can be safely concluded that the round or wrinkled trait and the yellow or green color traits are independently inherited. How do the traits get expressed? If cellular DNA is the information source for making proteins in the cell, how do proteins control the characteristics? Well, consider a plant with tallness as a characteristic. We know that plants have hormones that trigger the growth. Assume that an enzyme performs this process. If this enzyme works efficiently, a large quantity of hormone will be made and the plant will be tall. However, if the gene for that enzyme has an alteration that makes the enzyme less efficient, the amount of hormone will be less and the plant will be short. Thus, genes control characteristics or traits. Why do we have only boys in our family? Why not girls? Does such a difference occur only in humans? The sex of human beings is determined by the sex chromosome. In some animals like crocodiles, the temperature at which fertilized eggs are kept determines whether the animals developing in the eggs will be male or female. In other species such as snails, individuals can change the sex depending upon the external environment. It indicates that the sex is not determined by germ cells. Let's see how genetic inheritance determines the sex. Genes are present not as a single long thread of DNA but as separate independent pieces called chromosomes. All humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Of these, 22 pairs of chromosomes have a maternal and a paternal copy. But one pair, called the sex chromosome, is odd. Women have a perfect pair of sex chromosomes called uppercase XX. But men have a mismatched pair in which one is a normal sized X while the other is a short one called Y. So, women have XX while men have XY chromosomes. Let's look at the inheritance pattern of the uppercase X and uppercase Y chromosomes. All children will inherit an X chromosome from their mother regardless of whether they are boys or girls. A child who inherits an X chromosome from her father will be a girl and one who inherits a Y chromosome from him will be a boy.